today, I think my plan is to cover and finish uh, one way slab design. And look at the name, one way slab design. We went through slab design probably for the last four hours. I mean, last two classes or lectures. Uh, we know that there are so many systems among which there is something called slab with drop, with drop beams. And with those drop beams, they provide support for the slab. Uh, the slab can behave uh, in something called one way or two ways. When we say one way, it means 100% of the load of one slab panel will go into one direction. And when we say two way slab, it means the load will be shared by two direction, whether equally or, un or not equally based on the shape and the dimensions of the slab. Now, again, as we said in our class here, we're only teaching you one thing, one thing, one type of slab design called one way slab design, not even two ways, only one way slab design. Now, here is our first example. So on my screen here, you see my first example, a very simple plan view, very simple. It's four by eight. We have beams all around. And so what happened here is in order for us to uh, design this slab, that is what we have to do. Number one, ask yourself, do I have a beams around from all sides? Yes, I do. So the answer is what is the R or rectangularity of your slab panel? So the rectangularity by definition is the longer dimension of the slab divided by the shorter dimension, which is on my screen, it is A divided by four. So that's two, exactly two. And you guys know that from two and above, we call this one one way slab. Remember, when we say one way slab, please don't forget it is the shorter, the stronger, where 100% of the load as indicated on my screen. OK, and what do we call this direction? We call it principal. So the four meter direction call it principal or main. And how we do it, we say, OK, you know what? This direction is sh short, uh, is shorter compared to the other direction. It is more stiffer, more stronger and will carry 100% of the load. Next is we are going right like shortly. We're going to find what is the load uh, and what is the moment and we're going to design and find what is the area of steel required. But at this point of time, I want to emphasize that. When we find the reinforcement in this direction, it is the red one on my screen. Please take a moment, look up my screen and understand that the reinforcement in red. Is the reinforcement that takes care of the main direction which we will carry 100% of the load. How about the perpendicular direction, which in my plan view on my screen, I gave it color blue and I called it transverse reinforcement. Do we have to add any in that direction? The answer is yes. And if you're asking why do we have to do some rebar in this direction while 100% of the load going into the shorter and 0% of the load is going into the long direction is because to a reason you can see they are listed on my same slide. It is for slab integrity. And when I say slab integrity, what do I mean? So I'm going to tell you what do I mean by slab integrity. Guys, the way we solve the one way slab is by thinking, by considering a one meter wide design strip. This one meter design strip is already shown on my screen around the red rebar. So what we do is we think about our slab as many, many uh, one meter design strip as and we turn it into a beam. We find the bending moment and then the reinforcement. But at the end of the day, even that's in our analysis, we think about one way slab as several adjacent design strips. But at the end of the day, it is still a two dimensional element, a blade element, which means we need to make them the work together, which means we have to add a transverse reinforcement. The other reason why do we add transverse reinforcement is there are some stresses that we never even pay attention to, like what? 
like thermal and shrinkage stre stresses. That's why we add transverse reinforcement. How much it will be the minimum reinforcement as per the code. Now let's move on to the next slide. So here is the example by number. Uh, again, our slab is five uh, by 16 meter. And how many panels, like slab panels? It is only one. There is no beams to simply separate uh, the slab into different panels. There is only two beam lines. One is happening on grid line two. Another one is happening on, in, on grid line number one. OK, and there is no beam line on grid line number C or grid, grid line number A. And that's why, please, if you get something like that in the in the assignment or in the exam, don't waste your time uh, to estimate the R because simply R you do it only if the beam is surrounding the slab from all sides. OK, fine. So which means because I have a beam on grid line one and two, it means my slab, there is no other way to go for the for the load to go. It will go where I'm showing the 100% on my screen. Please look up my screen, look at the blue uh, arrow and look at the 100%. This tells you where my load will go. We call it load bath. Then when you have the load bath, then you need to come up with how many design strips do I need? And I think if you think about it, you will see, you know what? I need only one design strip. And the design strip, which is one meter wide, is also shown on my screen. OK, the design strip is also shown on my screen on the plan view. We need only one. Please don't tell me we need 16, because if we're able to find this design strip, find the moment, find any of steel, simply the next meter is simply at when. It's a copy and based. So all of them from grid line A to grid line C, all of them, they are identical. So we need only, only to analyze one design strip. OK, so next is. So I think that was covered last class, and I think um, uh, we said, OK, what uh, if the slab is not uh, given the slab thickness? You can see in this example, yes, there are some information on the left regarding material properties and loading, but in, there is no mention here whether or, the, or on the plan view or on the given uh, what is the slab thickness. How do we find the slab thickness if the slab thickness is not given? What do you think? Here is how we do it. So this table uh, comes from the code, table 9.2, and this table simply we use it to find what is the slab thickness and also what is the beam depth for both of them. Please be careful because one way slab is one line and then the next line is beams so be careful what am i designing am i designing slab then you go for the first line am i designing beams then i go for second line please look up my screen on my table i kind of shaded what are the rows and the column need to be uh, used so you can see solid one way slab so that's first row together with this with assembly supported why Tahir said that my design strip assembly supported not very difficult. Please look at my plan view. If this is my design strip, where are the support points? I have one here where the design strip will go and rest on the beam. I do have another point here where the design strip will go and rest on the beam. OK, and you you have a picture soon, which is I think let's go to this. Uh, here is the picture. You can see this is my design strip and here is my first support point. OK, so this is my support point. And this is my second support point. And you can see what do we call this picture? We call it simply supported, simply supported. Now, when it is simply supported, then how do we find the thickness? We simply have to divide the clearest band by 20. Now, what is the clearest band? Now, look at this cross section, please. I was asked it over the weekend about um, spans, clearest bands. Really, guys, the clearest band is something you will have to come up with. For example, uh, in the plan view between grid line one and two, between grid line one and two, you can see uh, center to center, it's five meter. Now, when you think about the clearest band is from this point here. Why this point? Because from this point to this point, my slab has no support. And that's why it's called clearest band. 
and uh, because you know the, the width of the beam, so you can simply find the clear span. Where Tahir can I get the width of the beam? Please look at my plan view. So on the plan view, everywhere I said 250 by 650, yeah? 250 by 650. So it looks like my beams, all of them, they are 250 by 650, which means uh, the width of my beam is 250 millimeters. So you can find your clear span is 4750. And finally, you can find the thickness of your slab. Guys, again, there's nothing new. This is copy and based. We've said this before. I want to just remind you so you get the continuation of the discussion. The rule, guys, when we get a thickness, the rule is we never just build any slab to any thickness. It has to be a rounded number. So our rounding rule here is in metric system, we round it to the nearest 10 millimeter up, round up to the nearest 10 millimeter, and in imperial system, we go to half inch. And I can tell you, even in Canada, we use metric, but I know that people, they say a six inch slab, seven inch slab, seven and a half inch slab, even it's metric, but they still say, call it by the inch. In this example, I used H equal to 250, 250. And I told you before, that uh, it don't take this. Remember, I added 12 millimeter from 238, which is the minimum, to my selected H. Is that something people, they take it easy? Not really. 12 millimeter for the multiply by the entire area, especially if I have a large uh, floor area, and if I have so many floors, then this will add so much extra to my foundation, my seismic design. So only in this example, I just went easy and I went from 238 to 250 because the area is small and probably have one floor. But I'm telling you, if if this is this is not the case when uh, engineers design high rise building, they look at what is the minimum, what is the minimum thickness of the slab so they can save on footing foundation design and seismic design. Hopefully this is clear. Now, once you know the thickness of the slab, then you can start uh, estimating loads. The thickness of the slab is uh, important. I think we had the same discussion last class. Why do I need thickness of the slab? Because simply the slab will have to support itself. So the self weight of the slab is part of the weight of the load. In addition to for sure, when I do the design, I need to get the, the, the G, which is the effective depth, which is related to the H. Now, how do we find the, weight, the, the, the weights on the slab? You can see here, I just uh, said, OK, you know what? It is 0.25. I, I, my, the slab thickness was 250, that's millimeters. But when I use it here, I have to turn it into a meter. Why meters? Because this number is kilo newton per cubic meter. So everything has to be meters. And this is your SDL. Guys, look at this place, you can see I did not multiply the, the total number by a trip width. Actually, I did because the trip width is how much is only one meter, which is neutral. If you multiply anything by one meter, you'll get the same number. Why is that? Because look at the plan view. My design strip width is always one meter, one meter. Now, what you have to do also is you need to find your live load. Again, one more time, 4.8 times 1, so that's 4.8. And uh, you go to through uh, load uh, combination number 1 and load combination number 2 because you want to find uh, what is the governing load. So it looks like load 2, load combo 2 will give us the highest load, and this number will be my W factor. This number governs, huh? And then once you know the load, then we are ready to find the moment. And you can see here, I use this equation. Moment factored or factored moment equals the factored load multiplied by the Spanish square, the clear Spanish square divided by eight. Why the Tahir used this equation and why some other time it's strong to use this equation? Because the system, please, please, Take your time. Look at what is the structural system of your slab uh, design strip, and you can see obviously this is simply supported. Only for simply supported, we can say my moment is equal W L N square over eight. For other system like cantilever or continuous beam, 
we use different formula or method. Now, what's the moment? The moment is key uh, 46. 0.82. Remember, I did not use the center line to center line dimension. I use the clear span in here, okay, to estimate the moment. Now, now I know. Now I know that my moment is, or the moment on my one meter wide design strip is 46.82. Can I design my design strip right now? Please help me. Yes or no? I know the moment. Can I start designing my uh, one meter wide design strip? What do you think? Any input? Any help? Yes. Yes, you can. Why is that? Because look at this. Look at this is my design equation here. You can see on my design equation, I need the moment and uh, let's see what else I need. For sure, if you guys remember, I need my D. What is D? Is my effective depth, which is simply here. So the effective depth is 250, which is the slab thickness, minus the concrete cover and half of bars. Please take a note, and I didn't write this down. Please take a note. Please take a note right now. We do not have stirrups. We do not have stirrups in slabs, and that's why uh, the effective depth calculation, uh, it doesn't have any steer up thickness. In general, if you have a beam, you would go and say 250 minus to a uh, cover plus a steer up plus half bar. Uh, but in this case, it's a slab, so there is no steer up. Please take a note. So my effective depth is 222, and this number goes straight into my design equation like so. So here is my 222.5. And one more time, it goes under the square root, and we're able to find area of steel. Really, what I want to rem remind you, which I'm maybe some of you already remember, that what is my beam width? You guys remember the equation was 0.0015 FC dash uh, uh, width of the beam. So you can see here the width of my beam, it is 1,000. Why 1,000? Because it's one meter design strip one meter design strip so you can see here in my equation i got 624 and i told you before that this is will not be my way to go uh, after i taught you this lovely other method you guys remember the other lovely method which we use tables okay so if i want to use table instead of doing this painful math i'm going to show you how so if you want to use the tables instead of the equation, what you have to do very simply to find the K. How do you find the K? It is simply the moment divided by BD squared. Very simple. So what is my moment? It is my it is my this moment 46. But remember, you have to multiply 10 to the power 6 for the units. And then you divide here by the width of the beam, which is 1000, and then the depth squared. So you get 0 0.95 MBA. What's next? I'll show you what's next. So the answer is in the next slide. So you can see here uh, 0.95. It's be exactly between 0.9 and 1. So I go in the middle and then I go on the column 25 and you can see here. How much is my row? I'm going to zoom in. So my row is exactly the middle between uh, 0.27 and 0.31, which is 0.29. So now I know my row by interpolation. So here is my row. So I got my row here is 0.29. And then finally to find area of steel, I go 0.29 divided by 100 because it's a percentage and then multiply by 1000, which is the width of my beam and then multiply by the D. So I got 645. Let me ask you one more time. So you guys are following. you. Now we have two numbers. Which one you think is more accurate? Any help? The uh, long version over the table. The table, ah? Huh? Do, you, do you know why the table is more accurate? Um, Isn't it to do with the alpha and beta? Because there's exact, uh, there's exact values for beta and, uh, and the other one, alpha. Exactly, Hamid. So alpha 1 and beta 1, those are exactly estimated. Not like the equation when I round them to 0 0.8 and 0 0.9 all the time, regardless what's my f prime c. If you remember that, okay? 
Thank you for remembering this old information. OK, so. So you can see here, uh, as I said, from this point on, unless uh, no, uh, unless uh, I, to I tell you exactly use the class derived equation. So this what called class derived equation and this one called the table. So in my assignment or in my exam, I will be specific. I'll tell you do this or that or both. So please watch. What do we call this method? Class derived equation. What do we call this method? Table, table, CSA tables. OK, so you can see the numbers are very, very close. And uh, next is next is I'm going to check whether I'm meeting the code requirements. So now I have an area. I will go ahead and find my row balance. Which is F prime C divided by 1100. You can see, guys, uh, I, I, I know like you've done a good job in beam design and study hard. You will see things are very, very, very similar. OK. There is no science here. You have to estimate row balance to avoid compression failure. Uh, F prime C over 1100. So this will give you 2.2%. Uh, and uh, our reinforcement ratio is how much? It's 0 0.29. So our reinforcement ratio is 0 0.29 and the balance is 2.2. We're way, way below and away from compression failure. And by the way, so you know, this is uh, almost all the time the case in slabs. In beams, in beams, yes or no, sometimes we run into compression failure. Slab, it's seldom, seldom we face compression failure. It's the kind of low light reinforcement element, which is the slab. OK, and then also we have to make sure that we're meeting the code requirement when it comes to the area of steel minimum. So here is another check. Please look at my screen. Anytime I do check, I say OK in green. It means I have buzzed code requirement. Also, when it comes to area of steel minimum, what is the minimum? Please watch this. It is two per thousand of area gross. Two per thousand of area gross. So two per thousand multiplied by the width of the beam or the design strip 1000. And remember this one is is your H 250 and not the D. This number is the H not the D. So which means the code is asking us, please put 500 mil meter square minimum. Are we OK? Yes, of course we're OK because simply I go 645 and that's why that's why I'm above the minimum. So you can see I'm ab the, above the minimum below the maximum. So it means no need to do anything. I'm going to proceed. Now here is the first difference between slab design and beam design, which is not super science in beam design. What do you do when you have an area of steel? Can anybody or anybody who started on the beam design tell me if I give you if you already found your area of steel in beams? What will be your next step? Any help? You can find your effective depth. Uh, you yeah, you do it. You do check your effective depth, but remember here where kind of things are kind of settled and I'll tell you why it's settled. Uh, because assembly slab is likely reinforcement. We will not have issue of adding uh, like beams. Beams, we have a very limited width and we're trying to fit so many. And if we cannot fit them with the right spacing, then we have to add two layers of rebar. In a slab, in 99.9%, in that's not the case. Whatever you remember where I got the D. Do you guys remember where I got the D? Look at this place. Here is the D. So what do you think? What was my assumption? My assumption was it is one layer of rebar and remember where I get the 15 because uh, if you go to back to the original problem, I said use 15 M over there. Use 15 reinforcement. So looks like for uh, for slabs is a bit different from beams. OK, looks like my D. This is D assumed and it will be D actual on the same time. Did you guys get this point in a slab? <coughs> Your D actual will always kind of be it's your D assumed because you're ready. You have no problem with stacking like one layer or two layers. It's always always one layer. OK, but let me ask you now if in beams when you find area of steel, let's say 1800 mil square, what was your next step? Or what would be your next step? Calculate your beam minimum. OK, so you find your B minimum and what? Based on what? How can you find your B minimum? 
looks like you have to find the number of bars and the bar diameter. Do you guys remember that? Huh? If uh, if you have the area of steel and beams, then what you do is is you need to find how many bars do I need? And then after you know how many bars, then you check whether those number of bar will fit into one layer or two layers. Is that correct? OK, yes. so so here is the first difference in in slab. We don't do that. We do not find the number of bars rather than finding the spacing. OK, now you can see here. This is how I find the spacing. And I know initially it will look difficult, but as soon as I teach you how, why, why this is going to be of cake. So I'm trying to find what will be the spacing in my slab. Spacing between what? Between those bars of the main reinforcement. OK, so how do we find the spacing? You can see the number 1000 in red. What is this 1000 red? Can anybody tell me what is this 1000 red? That's the uh, width of our strip design. Exactly, that's the way that you are going to spread your rebar within. So that's 1000. So on the dominator side, do you see AS of over AB and uh, by numbers is 645 over 200? So let me let me ask you again, please forget about the equation you see on my screen. If I did 200, what is this number? So my equation ask me the area of steel should be 645 and I'm using 15 M and 15 M cross section is 200 mil square. So if I divide 645 divided by uh, 200, what do I get? I'm a specific guys. I'm, I'm a specific. What does this number represent this number? Are you excuse me? The R H O R the, the P. He's saying row. Row, row, row. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm dividing Hamid. I'm dividing the area of steel required by the area of a single 15 M. There is oh, no area. For, you're trying to find uh, how many bars you have. How many? Yeah, oh. how many three bars are in there? Exactly, guys. Guys, please. I mean, don't think I'm asking like hard questions. So. I know some of you think that I'm asking hard the question, but to be honest, the questions is very simple. Just try to think if you divide 645, you divide by 200. That's what we did exactly in beams. We, for example, I need my equation tells me I need 1800 and I'm using 20 M where 20 M every one of those has 300 mil square of rebar. 1800 by 300. Six bars, no super signs. Which means, guys, the number that I box out is what? Is the number of uh, bars, 15 M bars, required in this one meter. And look at this. When I divide one my, the width of my beam divided by the number, I get the spacing. Does it make sense for you? For example, let's say I'm going to, I mean, forget about the concrete. Let's say I'm going to plant one tree every 10, every, every 100 meter. So every 100 meter, I'm going to plant a tree and I have one kilometer section of the road. So how many trees or sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going to say the opposite. OK, let's say I want to plant 10 trees, 10 trees in one kilometer. So what will be the spacing between the trees? Looks like you guys, you are not, you don't like one, rebar, huh? one kilometer oh. divided by three trees. By, by how many trees? By how many yeah, trees? by so the number of trees. That's exactly what we're doing right now. There is no super science. I'm dividing the width of my beam or my slab design strip divided by how many bars should go into my one meter design strip. And what you get is you get the spacing. The spacing is center line to center line between the rebar. One more time. So to find the spacing between the rebar you have to divide always this 1000 doesn't change. It's the one in red doesn't change. It's always the same. OK, and then on the dominator side, you, you can see 645 is the area of steel. You get it from the equation or from the table. It doesn't matter, but this is the area you get it from the from the required. And then you divide by what you say, OK, I'm going to use 10 M for the reinforcement. So what's the area of 10 M? Put it there. If I'm using 15 M, this number will be 200. If I'm using 10M, this number will be 100 and so on and so forth. And then you end up with the spacing. 
between the repo. Are you guys following so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, now why? why um, maybe you ask yourself why is different from beams? I'll tell you why it's different. The, the, why it's different because simply for purely uh, inspection reason. Because we, when we are on site as a designer or maybe somebody is doing site reviews, how do we check the slab reinforcement? I myself, what I will do is I'm going to check the spacing. It is very hard to count on site. Like if I tell you my beam should have, for example, 315 M. OK, like in this in this uh, slab, we will have 300. Nobody is going to uh, count, start counting from one to 300. So what's the, uh, the thing that goes? Assembly, it goes by the spacing. And even during the construction, they go on the form and they put on the form, they put some marks with their measure tape, like let's say every 12 inches, and that's where they lay the rebar. Hopefully this makes sense for you. It's unlike the beam. In beams, we go by the total number of, of rebar in the beam. In a slab, we go by the spacing between the rebar. Are you following? Does it make sense for you? That makes sense. OK, now uh, you can see, I mean, if you have some experience, you will see we this number can be any number can be 306, 307, can be 308. But I'm asking you, practically, do we use 307 and 308? Not really. That's not practical. Really on site, people, they have a measure tape. And typically, even in Canada, they have measure tape that's met imperial that goes by the inch. And typically, it's a multiple of inches, multiple of inches, and where they can mark and do the measurement. So what is the rounding rule? So please, 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 what you do is you need to round down. Please look at my screen. It says round down to the nearest 25 millimeter, which is one inch. So which means finally, finally, the spacing between my rebar is going to be 300. So I went from 310. That's my calculation required. And that's the minimum. I go to, I go to 300 and some of you will ask why Tahir, why don't you go to 325? Why you round down? Why not up? Can anybody answer? We don't why have the space to, we don't have the space to round up. I don't know what you mean. We don't have a space to round up Domenico. Like we wouldn't it be? It would be less reinforced if we round it up. Exactly. That's 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 the answer. It is it if you round up. It means you're providing less uh, 15 M than you should. It means you're providing less area of steel than you should. So your area of steel for sure would be less than 645 and then you're done. Your slab will be unsafe. OK, so that's why we have to round up. And then finally, guys, the way we write uh, our, our call our rebar. So in beams, we call 3 dash 15 M in a slab. We don't say that in a slab. We say 15 M at 300 millimeter on center as it's written on my screen. Please look at my screen at the very bottom, uh, the last line. This is how we call rebar on our drawing. 15 M at, which means the spacing, 300 millimeter on center, O slash C, on center. OK? Following, guys? Are you following? Yeah, we're following. Yeah. OK, thank you. So again, so what happens next is, uh, everything comes next is you have to some code, some has requirements, and we have to make sure that those requirements are happening. So uh, you can see I'm doing this uh, checking on this slide here. So I'm checking uh, about the spacing. So I said, OK, 15 M at 300 mil on center. Does this meet code requirement? Should we leave the spacing? Can be any number. Uh, can we place a rebar every meter on the slab? No, you can't because the code says and uh, if you cannot remember, I'll go quickly to where the code says and then I'll come back. So here is where the code says here is your requirement. OK, guys, take a moment and remind yourself of this slide. This where the code needs some requirement to be checked. So for the spacing between the main reinforcement, uh, the code says, you know what? No, it has to be. So the spacing maximum is maximum between the main reinforcement. It should be the minimum of 3H or 500. Let's do the numbers. Huh? So minimum of 3 times H, which is 250. So that's 750 or 500. Looks like 500 will be uh, the, young, uh, the smallest. Please take a note that this is wrong. 
This is millimeters, a mistake, huh? That's a mistake. So it's a millimeters. Please change that one, huh? It's a millimeter. Also, so we can see, are we good? So the code is asking for maximum spacing, maximum spacing of 500 mil. Are we OK? Yes, we're OK because we're at 300. Exactly. Thank you so much. OK, now let's move on to the transverse direction. So the transverse direction, remember so far we are done. Just, uh, let me take a note. I want to correct this one. So slides light 28. So 28 has a mistake. OK, so guys also so we so far we we are OK. Main main direction has been done. It's done. Main main direction. Our principal direction is, is done. Let's look at the transverse direction. So transverse direction is we um, we want to find what should be the area of steel there. And remember the method here is different. Look at this, please. Please pay attention. Look at this for the main direction. This is how it went. It went by finding load, finding moment, finding area of steel, because 100% of the load will go into this direction. How about the transverse? Can I estimate moment on the transverse? Tell me, please. What is the bending moment on the transverse direction? Do you need that or do you just use the maximum spacing? No, I'm that? asking you, do we have any moment going on the Transverse direction? No, because it's no, no. exactly. So going in the other one. exactly. That's why we don't go like main. Main, you have to find moment. You have to find area of steel using table or equation. But for the transverse, it is only the minimum. So we need to provide the minimum. What's the minimum? The minimum is 500 mil square. Not by moment. It's based on minimum code requirement. OK, and we do the same thing. So we now we have we know the area of steel here. It's 500. And we do the same thing. We find the spacing, but this spacing is different. This spacing would between between will be between the 15M in the transverse direction. So so far we have two spacing. We found one which is at 300 on center. That's between main rebar. How about between transverse rebar? That's what we'll do right now. So we do the same thing, huh? So 1,000 divided by 500 divided by 200. Why is that? Because this, look at this, please. So this number is constant, constant all the time. This is the area of steel minimum required, and this is the area of 115M. Same way. So we get here 400. But the good news is 400, no need to round because it's already multiple of 25 mil. So no need to round. So finally, in the transverse direction, we will add 15M at 400 mil on center. Okay. Now. Let's finally check the spacing between the rebar on the transverse direction. Uh, we have a very similar equation. You can see if I zoom out, you will see it. Huh? On the main, uh, we do minimum of 3H or 500. On the transverse, uh, 5H or 500. So let's do the math. So 5 times 250, that's 1250. Or 500, which means the minimum is 500. You can see this will be my spacing. And remember, this is a mistake. Huh? It is not 500 meter, it is 500 millimeters. OK. So are we OK right now? My rebar, you can see it is four at 400 and the maximum is 500, which means I'm OK. You can see the green OK. It means I'm passing the code requirement. So now, uh, now guys, all the design has been done. I'm going to go to SLS and remember, is that new? This what you see on my screen is new or old? No, that's not new. That's not new. Crack control. You have done it with in the beam. You will have to do it one more time here in the slab, but I will tell you kind of a little trick. Huh? I'll tell you one trick. OK, so uh, as usual, if you guys remember, I know that this kind of uh, uh, like uh, maybe two weeks ago or maybe uh, more than a week ago. Uh, so we have to find something called the DC, which is the distance from probably I need to remind you. Let me quickly draw here. A quick uh, cross section very quickly. Huh? So let's say that's a cross section in my slab and let's say. Uh, let's say this is uh, some. Bar here. OK, let's. Uh, let's make it this. OK. As you guys remember, uh, what is my DC? 
DC is very simple. DC fro was from the center of my rebar to layer outside here. This is called the D sub C. Huh? How much is D sub C? Given that we have no stirrup, very simple. It is the cover plus half bar. Cover plus half bar, which is here. 20 mil cover plus half uh, 15. So 27.5. Now, the next one is Z. What is Z? You guys remember the Z, huh? The Z is, uh, is, uh, is uh, I'm sorry, the FS. So the FS, as we agree, that is going to always 60% uh, of F yield. So that's 240 MBA. And then finally, the A. What is the A? This A here, okay? So I'm going to remind you what is A. A is the assembly, is the dashed area, the dashed area around flexure rebar. OK, I'm going to do this. Huh? Control C, Control S. I will put more rebars here. So the, the thing, guys, the thing is you can take the one meter and you can find how many bars in one meter, because remember, really, this is this is the uh, the uh, the A. The A is is the area surrounding the area surrounding and I will dash this one the area surrounding uh, surrounding the flexure bar and you have to divide by the number of bars really the trick here is take only one bar and instead of you going one meter one meter so this this dimension here is 1000 so from here to there it is 1000 okay so you can go and how to find the a you can say you know what so the A, A will be 1000 multiplied by 2 DC and then you divide by how many bars 15M inside this one. But I will tell you an easier way. Guys, look at this, please. What is the spacing between my rebar? Like what is the spacing between this green to this green? Can anybody tell me how much the spacing between the rebar? 300. 300, that's correct. Thank you, Gord. OK, so that's 300, OK? So why don't you take only one bar? So you take from center line to center line like so. It will be your A. I think my A. So I'm going to take only one bar, which is center line to center line. And in, remember, if I do that, if I do that, it means it's going to be 300 times 2 DC, but divided by one. Why one? Because in this one, in this area here, there is only one bar. OK, and then finally, you need to go into the equation which is FS multiplied by A times DC to the power one third, you will get finally your crack control factor 18442, which is, it depends on, you have an inside slab or outside the slab, uh, and that's why the limit will change. If you have an inside the slab, you can go all the way to 30,000. If you have an in, outside the slab, it means this number will be 25,000 uh, for our crack control to be acceptable. Very, very, very simple. Okay. Can you do that with beams as well, or is it just slabs that you can do that? For? Only, only slabs, only slabs. Beams. Because there's only one layer, the right? Only for the slabs. You take only one bar. You take the area of center line to center line to the next bar, and then you can see. Look at the one. Do you see this one here? Because yeah. that because the again by the way you get the same number. So you get you will get the same number if you go with the entire one meter and you divide by how many bars. It'll get the same number if you go by one bar only. Yeah, I was just curious if it that if that translated only, in beams only as well. Sla only slabs, not beams. Guys, we're heading to the last discussion and then we will break. The last discussion, guys, here is about the detailing. Now we have done hundreds of numbers, and I can tell you, nobody cares of your numbers. Really, we want to have something that we can build off. And what you see on my screen is how we detail slabs. OK, so place and you can see there are lots of numbers and lots of um, of uh, green lines and lots of colors. So please, please, please pay attention to my discussion. OK, so let's go one by one and we build it. We will build this one slowly. Huh? So the first num first line you want to start with is the main direction. So please look up my screen and you will see this red dashed line, red dashed line. 
First of all, I'm going to tell you later why it's dashed. But for now, where is the main direction? The main direction is this or the longer one, the short or the long. The principle or the main direction, is it the short or the long? Short. The short, and that's why you can see my rebar. So this red thick, thick rebar dashed one, that's a rebar that goes from beam to another beam, and that is the main reinforcement, okay? And uh, remember, uh, I said, guys, we don't need 16 st design strips. Did I say that? We do not need 16 design strips. So how do we need? We need only one. But after we design it, everything else will become identical, and we can take the design applied for the entire width of my slab. Please look at the green line. So please, I'm going to point out to point out the green line. I'm asking you to look at this green line right now. Do you see this green line? It is not line. It is dimension line. So all dimension lines are green. So this dimension line, it shows you, you know what? Hey, apply this 15M at three at, and please look at the text. So 15M at 300 millimeter on center. OK, you apply it from where? Where you start until where? You go from the arrow to the arrow. It means I'm going to apply this M at 300 from grid line C to grid line A. Are you following? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say it one more time because this is very confusing. And if you get, don't get it now, you will never get it. OK, so our main direction is the short. So we draw a line on the short direction. And you can see there is no arrow at the very end because this is a rebar. But also together with the line, we connect to the line, a dimension line in green. And this dimension line, it shows the extent of the application of those rebar. And then at the intersection between the rebar itself, the dimension line, you can see what I did is I draw a circle, a circle, and I point my, t my label to the circle, and I said, this is 15M at 300 millimeter on center. Please leave BLL for later. I'm going to tell you what is this name later on. Now, I, what happened here is I know that I said that my beam is simply supported, which means I know by this discussion we're done. Simply supported, it means my main direction is done. But I'll tell you something. Every time I have a beam and a slab, when we bore concrete, we bore concrete for the beam and the slab together. So the beam and the slab, they are monolithic. So the slab, at, when it meets the beam, there's some connection, and this connection will create some negative bending moment. OK, I'm going to show you where. Please look at my screen. Do you see this, this rebar here, this rebar over there, and this rebar over there? There are all, there is a kind of L shape rebar in dark blue and this dark blue uh, rebar. This covers the bending moment where the beam, con the slab connects to the beam. Typically, this is very small moment and requires minimum reinforcement, which is 15 M at 400. And remember, it's going to be negative. It means my rebar will be on the top, not at the bottom. So this rebar here, the, the red one, it is at the bottom. Because I want you to think about the rebar, huh? sorry, the bending moment. The tension is on the bottom in the middle of my design strip. When it comes and connects it to my beam, the, there will be a little bit of negative bending moment. And that's why, because negative, you can see my rebar is a top layer. And I will show you this in a cross section in a minute. Huh? But guys, look at this. The red and the blue, those are the reinforcement for the main direction. For the main direction. And remember, together with any rebar, Together with any bar, you see green line. I'll zoom out. Together with any rebar, there is a green line. This green line, it marks the extension of the application of this rebar. It means, hey, please add to me, add those L bars from between grid line C all the to grid line A. Do you see the green line where it marks the extension? And always what you do is you draw the line like the blue line, like this way, and then you do the green line showing the extension. At the intersection, you put a circle, and then you go to the circle with the assembly with the call to your rebar, 15M at uh, uh, 400 millimeter on center. Now we can see why some rebar is dashed and some rebar is continuous. 
because where they are at the slab. If they are bottom, if they are at the bottom of the slab, we make them dashed. If they are at the top of the slab, we make them continuous. You can see the blue is continuous and the red is dashed because same the, the one is the bottom and this one is a top layer. Now what happened is here we're almost done. We're almost done. Uh, where is where can you see the transverse? Can you see anywhere on my on my screen? Where is the transverse reinforcement? Can you tell me the color? The yellow one. The yellow exactly. You can see the yellow and the yellow is a bottom and that's why it is it, it is dashed. You can see my rebar will go from here to there, will go from here to there and simply uh, uh, where the extent. Look at the green. So look at the green. Uh, this green line here, dimension line, so you can tell me, okay, you know what? Take this bar, repeat this bar between the beams where the dimension line is showing. Huh? So this green line, it shows the extent of the application of those yellow bars. Okay, and you can see they are going perpendicular to, perpendicular to my main direction, and that's why it's called transverse direction. Okay, now here is a, here is a one, uh, one question, one dollar question. You can see, look at my screen. Looks like so far I have two bars on the bottom, one in red and one in yellow. Do you guys see that? Yellow and red. Both those bars are happening where? At the bottom of my slab. Yes or no? Yeah. So for, for, for people on site, this is very confusing. Like, you know, if you just tell them, you know, which one will go onto each other, because physically they cannot be on the same elevation. Huh? There must be like a mat. Huh? There must be one will go on top of each other. OK, now let me ask you which one you think will go on the bottom, the red. So now we have bottom and on the bottom we have two layers and one of them will go lower and the other one will go upper. Are you following? So yeah. we have two bars. Okay. Probably in the cross section is going to be better, huh? So probably in the cross section, pro cross section probably will do better, huh? So I'm going to show you guys. Look at this. So that's cross section, and you can see one bar is going on this direction, and the other bar is going into the other direction, perpendicular to each other. I'm asking you, which one you think will go into the bottom, the lower layer, and which one will go up to the upper? The yellow. The, yellow. the yellow should be the yellow one. Excuse me? The yellow. Red. The red yellow will go where? The yellow one. Exactly. The yellow one, I think the yellow one will be in the bottom. Yeah. Both of them, they are at the bottom. Both of them, they are at the bottom of the slab. But the one red. will be lower layer, and the other one will go upper layer. Okay. The yellow one will be the lower layer. Hey guys, right actually, the lower. actually, guys, the answer is my screen. You can see the yellow, it says, Bottom upper layer, bottom upper layer. And how do you know that? It's from here. There's a key. Uh, P U L, it means bottom upper layer. What does it mean? It means yes, it's at the bottom, but there are two layers at the bottom. So this one will go at the upper. The, the reason why do we add the red rebar at the bottom? You can see it's PLL. Huh? PLL, it means it means bottom lower layer because simply we need a lever arm. So if you put it on the upper layer, we use low, we lose lever arm. That's why the red has to go on the bottom lower layer and the yellow will go on the bottom upper layer. Please spend some time. I'll give you a minute. Look at my screen here. I know it's not easy to understand, but the only way is you follow me in this discussion. If I give you this ready, I bet you you will never understand anything. It has to be built up from scratch from you with you. OK, guys, one more time. You need to do this line by line. Number one, step number one. So the red dash is number one. And then you put its green line, the, the dimension line. And then at the intersection, you label with the call 15M at 300 mil on center, bottom lower layer. Next is the blue, the blue continuous. Those looks like L shape. So you put the rebar, you put their dimension line, and then at the intersection, you write their call. So those are minimum 15M at 400 on center, top upper layer, top upper layer. OK, and then what you do finally, you do the transverse. 
which goes perpendicular to the red dashed because it's at the bottom and then you put the green line the dimension line that shows the extent and then you call them 15 m at 400 millimeter on center bottom upper layer bottom upper layer so it's on the bottom of the slab but upper layer okay and you can see here and by the way spend some time please i give you a cross section so i give you a cross section here's my cross section here the mark is here this is my cross section and here is the cross section over there okay so take your time where is the main i can by the way can color them right now so you guys can see huh i'm gonna color it with you so i'm gonna do this so this bar here from here to there from here to there this is my main reinforcement it is going to be red probably i'll make it thicker huh so make it thicker so that's the red now where is the yellow the yellow the yellow is here so here is my yellow i'm gonna put it here and then i'll color it with yellow so that's my uh, my transverse and then where blue is the moment to there and then from here to there and this one will be blue blue and probably will be thick and then it goes down because it looks like an l shape so i'm going to do it one more time here so l it goes from here to there and it's blue and it's two thickness also the one on the left here so another line from here to there and then blue and then two and then finally from here to there and then blue and then two guys hopefully this will give you a visual to connect the cross section huh so this one here is a top upper layer top upper layer the red is bottom lower layer and the yellow is i'm gonna zoom in and the yellow is bottom upper layer are you guys following i know it's not easy are you following yeah 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 following okay so finally guys uh, here is the uh, the 3d picture uh, again there is no super science i built this using revit and I don't know how clear from this uh, view here. You can see there are some L shape. Probably can point to them right now. Here is the L shape. Huh? The L shape is supposed to be in red. It goes this way, bends down. And there are some rebar will go here uh, between the beams. And then finally, that. so this one here is your transverse. This one is a transverse. And this one is the main. Does it make sense for you? The main will go into the main direction. And the transverse will go perpendicular to the main direction. Is that guys clear? Yeah, that's clear. So I'm showing you a 3D. I'm showing you a, a plan view. I'm showing you a cross section. If you want to see the Revit, my Revit model, I can grab it after the break. Hello. Okay, Hi. guys, if, if you have no question, I'm going to give you 10 minutes to break. 10 minutes break. We'll come back here at 2.10. 210. Um, um, can you please um, explain the use of the um, blue ribbon again? Toy, can you say it again? The blue ribbon. Okay, so guys, what is the blue ribbon? The blue ribbon is, uh, let, let's go to our bending moment. So I'm going to go to my bending moment. So we can see where what is the bending moment here. Uh, let's draw the bending moment. So it looks like it's simply supported and looks like uh, here is the bending moment. Huh? Toy, would you think that this is a bending moment where the maximum here in the middle W L squared over eight? Yes. Yes, but this is kind of a why is that? Because think about you're getting your ruler put it on your, on your finger. There is no there is no connection between your ruler and the finger, and it will be simply supported. How about the reality for our slab? When we bore slab and beams, we bore them together because we bore them together. So the, there is a connection between them, and because of there is a connection when the slab is trying to bend at this end. Okay, let me clean it a little bit so guys can understand. Huh? So let's do some cleanup. OK, 
See, guys, when the slab is trying to bend, like uh, like at this point here, it's not free. It's not free to bend because the beam is there, and the beam will say, "No, I'm here. You know, I'm gonna resist. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have some stiffness. I'm gonna stop you from rotation or restrain you." And because of this restraint, guess what? Here is what the bending moment will look like. There will be a bending moment that goes from here, a little bit negative bending moment, and also on this side here, there will be a little bit of bend, uh, from this side here. There will be a little bit of negative bending moment on this side. And uh, so probably I can draw it, draw it here. OK, so please be patient. So the boss, the bending moment for sure will go, will be like this, parabola. And then the negative, you will see there will be negative, a little bit negative bending moment here when the slab connected with the beam, with the beam. And also there will be some negative bending moment here where the slab connects to uh, the the beam, OK? And but, but those this value, this value here and this value here is very small, very small value, and it needs a minimum reinforcement all the time. And that's why I didn't even have to do it. I don't have to estimate it because I know minimum reinforcement is 15 M at 400 as per this uh, calculation. Huh? You can see here is how I estimate the minimum. The minimum is 500. And if you turn this into 15M and spacing, it will be 15M at 400, OK? And that's why I added here uh, those L bars at 15M at 400. Did I answer the question? Yes. OK, thank you. Let's see, somebody is showing hands. Hamid, do you have a question? Yeah, is it safe to say for the main reinforcement will always be the bottom lower layer? And for the transverse, it will be bottom upper layer? Always, 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 because as I said, there is a reason for that. Because remember, the main has a moment, has responsibility. The main has obvious responsibility, which is the moment. And for moment, we need lever arm. Huh? We need lever arm. And that's why if we put it on the upper layer, we lose 15 millimeters. We lose 15 mils. OK, thank you. And can you see that? Can you see that if we put it on the upper layer? Bottom upper layer, we lose 15 millimeters of the lever arm. Yeah. OK, so it has to be always the main reinforcement has to be always bottom lower layer. Thank you, guys.